this talk. Uh, just a couple of words about the problem exists, and then I try to talk a bit about how it works in the commercial databases, because it is exist in that world, and we should be aware how it works. Just a bit about IBM DB2, but mostly I will tell about uh, Oracle Wait interface. Then I turn to Postgres with current state, uh, the history of attempts to implement something like that in Postgres, and the existed tools. And then some agenda, what's next? So the goals of my talk are actually uh, to explain that the problem exists, uh, then explain that what already we can do th with this, and uh, suggest some kind of roadmap how to improve things. Actually, uh, these uh, some recipes for uh, DBA will be very brief because uh, we are limited to the 45 minutes and I um, decided to prepare the separate talk with complete list of recipes and submit it to the, some of the uh, upcoming conferences because it's really a huge topic to cover how uh, Detray system tab perf works and uh, how you can safely use it with your database. And the final purpose is to summarize all this information to keep it in one place and finally submit to hackers uh, to make things better, actually. So uh, what is tracing and what it's all about? Uh, the problem is that for customer or software developer, it doesn't matter. The problem with the database is usually the response time. Uh, and uh, usually the user actually doesn't care what happens on inside the database. But to solve the problem, DBA actually must know uh, what exactly happens inside and how much time takes some stage of this slow response. For example, we have some long sequential scan or something like that, something like that. Uh, for that purpose, uh, DBA must have some tools to profiling or to tracing their database. Uh, what is the difference basically between these two terms? Uh, imagine we have some uh, program execution uh, flow and we have some points uh, in which we can measure, for example, time. Uh, and uh, we just profile in using some tool to measure uh, which of these points take the most time. Uh, the tracing is a bit uh, similar but a bit different. Uh, with tracing, some event occurs and we can measure which time was taken by this event. And this is actually, the, the both approaches are quite useful, but the tracing is actually very useful for DBA to uh, improve database performance. And of course, uh, we need the historical data for tracing and profiling because the usual uh, question from the customer or from software developer is something occurred at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, what we can do about that now. So the, just some example, not related to the database, but it's useful to understand the problem. Uh, this is uh, two roads, actually, uh, which I can take to reach Frankfurt Airport to uh, fly to Ottawa for the PGCon. Uh, this one is uh, the fast train, and this one the slow train. Uh, if I measure just in a naive manner, uh, the uh, fast one will be better because it takes uh, 40 minutes less than the slow one. But uh, if I look inside, I find that uh, this one uh, has a connection here. And uh, besides of the connection can be longer than 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Uh, this is uh, a very busy railroad hub. And if concurrency occurs here, uh, I can lose my connection and wait another hour. That's why it's quite impossible, not just 
to measure the time between two points A and B, but to know how it actually works. And this ideology is actually behind uh, the Oracle weight interface, uh, which is some sort of new approach to performance measurement. Okay, in old times, uh, how it usually works. Uh, customer asks that we have slow response time and the DBA usually uh, starts to mumble something like, okay, load average is okay, and okay, oh, probably someone blocks someone. And this is not the, uh, actually the proper <laughs> answer because uh, this is all about the guessing, because then we have no proper diagnostic tools, we must guess. With them, actually, too, but uh, <laughs> you know that I mean. <laughs> ju ju just, to be, uh, just to be more close to the, to the ground, uh, just imagine uh, optimizing SQL queries without explain analyze. And this is exactly what we do now uh, with some performance issues inside Postgres when we're talking about disk performance, auto vacuum performance, something like that. Uh, this is exactly the same case. Uh, in old times in Oracle, in before version 7.0.12, uh, the situation was pretty the same. They have some uh, ratios, uh, there are several basic ratios, for example, uh, cache hit ratio, and if this ratio is in some diapason of um, values, everything is okay. If it is out of this, uh, values, that's bad thing. And actually it was some sort of checklist they need to um, see if everything is okay and then try to advise to their customer what to do. And this is the different approach because uh, even in those times uh, the customer had a problem with the response time, not with the ratio. He actually doesn't care about the ratios. Uh, after uh, Oracle, this Oracle version, uh, Oracle introduced uh, a weight interface. First it was about some about 100 events and it was quite useful but still very useful. Effectively weight event is a bottleneck. It's some point then the database starts to wait, spends time and um, actually this is the performance bottleneck. Uh, for that purpose uh, there are a lot of uh, different counters, triggers, which are uh, just recording the information. And after that, uh, there are a lot of different tools to analyze it, to use SQL to produce reports. And actually, there are two different uh, parts of this uh, task. One to collect the data, one, uh, and the second one to uh, implement effective reporting about that. Uh, and using the collected data, uh, this second part could implement both profiling and tracing. And that's quite useful because uh, you can just do the both uh, tasks. Uh, and uh, anecdotally, uh, th that was an und undocumented feature in that times. And I definitely knew that someone in this uh, auditory could tell this story. <laughs> uh, but um, the one more proof that uh, this is highly desired uh, thing for the DBAs is that uh, immediately DBAs explore it that, there is a, uh, ex that it is exist and uh, made a walk around how to, to use it and there were some tutorials in those times and so on and so on. Uh, so it steadily became a very popular because imagine that you have Uh, it's, a, the, it's a big story, <laughs> what actually they report. Uh, I will return to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, initially, uh, yeah, okay, I return to it. <laughs> uh, that's an Oracle example. Uh, and this is uh, the active session history. Uh, that's a part of uh, system global area. That's actually the cycling buffer uh, to which different Oracle sessions 
uh, which are doing something with uh, data, executing something, they put the information about uh, these events. And um, once upon a time, the special, some, some processes are pulling this uh, buffer and get some top uh, information about most of the weight events. For example, you can see here <laughs> some quite understandable for Postgres people things uh, in spite that this is all Oracle events. Right. And you can see that this is uh, time waiting in uh, microseconds in this, I believe. Uh, and this is quite useful because you can see that uh, somewhere in your database instance uh, there is some high contention in some segment, for example, and you can uh, just try to figure out there it is. Uh, in this view, actually, there are a lot of information about that. Uh, and you can not only guess, but just dig through the, uh, this weight event and understand what it is. Uh, to confuse uh, the public, uh, actually, different weight events uh, are measured differently. And uh, some of them with a more or less uh, approximate approach. That means uh, they are not exact the clock timestamps, just intervals or something like that. Uh, some of them uh, are measured in different uh, in milliseconds, microseconds, and uh, then there is some approximation about that. So it's quite not an easy uh, to figure out how it works without reading huge books about that. Uh, but it's quite useful because if you can see that uh, you have uh, 10 times or 100 times difference in waiting for some event, that means that you have a problem with, with this exa exact part of your workload. A uh, real life example uh, from my personal experience in times of uh, administering Oracle. Uh, there were an Oracle uh, on the brand new hardware and there were tests to put it in production. Uh, but uh, there is something strange about that. Uh, from time to time all updates were stacking and nothing actually shows that the problem is with disk I.O. or something like that. No significant uh, problems using external tools were available. But uh, using uh, tracing the weight interface, uh, I found that there are a lot of asynchronous weights they were exactly introduced in 11th version. And um, only because of that, uh, we could manage that uh, hardware vendor forget to configure asynchronous I.O. plugin to the uh, clustered file system. Uh, I cannot uh, even imagine uh, which another method allows to do so, because uh, normally enterprise uh, clustered file systems uh, are not user-friendly about diagnosing such things. And uh, the database itself uh, actually must uh, to track such problems and uh, to help DBAs to uh, understand what's going on. Uh, in DB2 situation is uh, pretty the same, but uh, I personally think that they try to uh, uh, bridge the gap between uh, Oracle and themselves because they uh, started to introduce uh, weight-based ideology of performance tracking in uh, 9.5 for Linux, Unix, Windows, I believe. And it was uh, not a lot of useful events. But for example, in uh, DB2 version 10.9.1, uh, 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 this is actually the hyperlink. And I published the slides, and you can just go uh, and uh, see the the menu about that. Uh, there are a lot of monitoring views and a lot of events. And they are highly configurable uh, and quite useful for performance diagnosis. But just, just in case the situation with DB2. Uh, meanwhile, in PostgreSQL. Uh, in PostgreSQL, uh, no, not so funny. There is actually no uh, analog of uh, any weight interface, SCs. Uh, and um, that means we are still trying to figure out what, happen, what happens using some checklist. Normally we try to see if there are some uh, terrible mistakes in configuration uh, and if 
not, we try to figure out which query is actually slow. And uh, that's a huge benefit that we have pgstat statements uh, to find these queries and uh, several other tools uh, to find problems. But still, uh, we need to guess and uh, to bring our experience to understand what is going on. But the good point is that uh, we have some things that looks like uh, the sharing ideology with weight interface. For example, pgstat bg writer and uh, these times uh, in Linux at least, uh, no, Solaris to uh, exist some external profile and tracing tools uh, which at least uh, it's possible to use them because some profiling tools uh, they're actually uh, too dangerous to use in some kind of production and with the database actually uh, troubleshooting of performance problems should be done in production because uh, it's quite not an easy task to implement them in test. So why I mentioned uh, pgstat bg writer? Uh, just imagine if uh, it does not exist like it was uh, in old times. Uh, you have, for example, some results from IOSTAT with disk utilization. And uh, you need then guess uh, what is going on, uh, what caused the problems with your disk I.O. Uh, okay, if you are well experienced at DBA, you can see these spikes and guess that that looks like problem with checkpoints. But uh, using pgstat uh, bg writer, you can definitely say that this is a problem with checkpoint. And in new versions, you actually can say that something uh, was in sync phase, uh, we spent some time in write phase, and so on and so on. But still, it's uh, not perfect because, for example, you, uh, you need just reset statistics, sample data, uh, wait until you uh, have enough statistic, and uh, that is not uh, the thing that shows you to make things better fast. But it exists. It's a good step for, to a pro proper direction. Um, the second thing is external tracing tools. Uh, Dtrace, uh, the system tab on Linux, uh, perf, uh, and uh, they can two things, basically. Uh, they can uh, kernel space probes, and they can uh, user space probes. Uh, kernel space probes, for example, you need to see if you have a lot of uh, F-syncs in your system and which application actually issues this F-sync. Probably it is uh, Postgres, probably it's your uh, third-party backup software, something like that. Um, but uh, indeed, the interesting thing is user space probes, because the problem with the Postgres call performance, uh, they are actually often in user space, and you need to trace some uh, calls inside Postgres and see what happened. Uh, but um, ideologically, uh, kernel space probes are safer because they are pre-compiled, and if something happens, it often happens because, for example, some scripts of system tab uh, contain division by zero from time to time. I, I, I'm not saying that uh, it's a very stable tool. Uh, kernel uh, space probe will not work, and if you are using user space probe within Postgres, for example, uh, you can um, seriously damage your PostgreSQL, uh, and that's bad. That's an example, a short example, how to use uh, perf probes. Uh, I just uh, put perf an example because I think it's more convenient than system tab, uh, at least. Uh, but uh, they have pretty the same functionality, uh, something it's better to do with system tab, something better with perf but at least it's convenient. Uh, you can uh, basically register the probe uh, for one and every function which is uh, declared as, um, as external. Uh, and th that's the benefit, uh, because you can just trace uh, the execution of this and uh, the chains of execution and represent the report in uh, some graphical way and at least the simplest probe I, here, I, I have here uh, shows us that we have 
a lot of uh, lightweighted log acquisition um, in while running some PG bench. Uh, that's a simple uh, example. Uh, also, you can just trace uh, and profile any of your query, just put it inside the uh, call with uh, PageSQL and wrap it into the uh, perf stats, and you will see on what you really spend time. Uh, there is a good tutorial, I believe, uh, made by Craig Ringer on Second Quadrant blog with uh, lots of examples how to use that. Uh, but the problem uh, is with uh, all these tools. Like you can see here, uh, for example, uh, it's not an easy to start with because uh, you need uh, to know uh, the meaning of all these things. And uh, these things actually not for DBAs. They're actually for kernel developers because uh, you need the special background to understand them. And it's quite not an easy task because uh, the kernel development of Linux is very rapid now. And they change uh, the perf, of the documentation uh, lags behind and it's very uneasy task to uh, make the best about that. Uh, at, it is really easy to take your system down. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities, at least because this trace file is put into file and uh, that is a problem. Uh, you can simply uh, get so many uh, trace uh, events uh, that uh, you, you have problems with disk performance. Um, quite uh, the simple example, uh, you can forget uh, some wildcard, uh, then you are analyzing some syscalls and uh, perf itself will take uh, more resources than pgbench and postgres itself. Uh, so that's, I would say that's not a uh, very safe thing. Besides of that, um, if you are working with uh, some security aware production environment, uh, for example in regulated industry, uh, you need to run the thing that uh, requires specific a new version of kernel and uh, you need a uh, root uh, for uh, registering the props and to run uh, the stats, for example. Uh, this, is a f this is a thing that it's not easy to pursue your security officers to allow you to do that. Uh, and this is actually dangerous. Uh, and the last thing that uh, they are both uh, more profilers uh, than tracers they're actually uh, good in profiling some syscalls or something like that, but this is the, not the result like uh, was at the Oracle slide. We, then you can simply see that some meaningful uh, event inside your database are waiting for something. That's a different thing, yeah. The other thing is you, you have to have it compiled with symbols, right? And it's to, be, to do all this, right? Yeah. Which is not necessarily, you have to have the symbols available. Sorry, yeah. Like yeah. Well. Yeah, sure. You have to be, you know, just can't do this on anyone's running system. Well, if you install the symbols, you can. Well, yeah, but, but yeah, that if yeah. anyone's random. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that, that's a very good point. Um, so, uh, at the same time, this is still very useful. <laughs> Many DBAs actually use that like poor man wait interface. And uh, I will say that then you have some uh, strange performance problems. Uh, especially in PG Bouncer, for example, which is uh, very poor about the diagnostics tools. Uh, and if you uh, try to see something inside a uh, user space, uh, that's, th that's the only tool you have. That's why you need to do it. Uh, and that's why you need uh, to have Postgres compiled with debug symbols and uh, other maybe not so secure things from the point of view of uh, security officers. Um, there are examples then, uh, accidentally someone uh, discovered that what the perf is and that actually leads to uh, significant improvements of uh, Postgres scale performance. That's uh, the example with uh, this patch by Robert Haas as he uh, describes that. 
and just imagine uh, what will be if we can uh, a bit uh, a bit easier uh, way to uh, find such bottlenecks uh, on the large user base that will be uh, quite useful for PostgreSQL development itself. Uh, and uh, the second argument is the, uh, that several people try to implement something like this. That means that uh, this feature is uh, highly appreciated by the community and by the DBAs. So the brief history of uh, some attempts to do that. The first one was uh, by Greg Smith. Uh, I believe that was uh, the first one in, uh, by the timestamp, actually, but that doesn't matter, actually. Uh, the problem with uh, this attempt from my uh, point of view is that it was too complex and uh, because of that uh, it was not an easy task to implement that and it was not an easy task to uh, make people understand that it's a useful thing. Uh, like Greg explained that um, uh, one of the matters of that was uh, he tried to implement uh, some interface analog for Oracle Wait interface. And uh, since it is very complex, uh, the result was very complex. Uh, the second problem with this patch was that actually in those times uh, Postgres has no uh, dynamic shared memory allocation, no background workers, and it was not an easy task to try to implement something like that. Uh, the second one was by uh, Satoshi Nagayasu, uh, excuse me for my spelling if <laughs> something not good. I believe he's uh, uh, at the conference, <laughs> at least and here. Um, and uh, again, uh, it was very straightforward uh, attempt to implement this. Uh, because if you try uh, to log something, you just start recording uh, the time and then you get the results. Uh, and uh, after performance analyzing on this patch, uh, it was, I believe, rejected because of significant performance overhead. But the idea is still very good because it shows that uh, we need some such functionality. So uh, the both of these uh, patches actually uh, helped me very much to, uh, to choose some another approach. Uh, then was the suggestion from Pavel Stulli to log the uh, log wait times with slow queries. Uh, but I believe that was some problems with design of this because uh, somebody wants to see it in how to explain, somebody wants to see it at log, someone to, wants to see it in uh, PG catalog. Uh, and that's why it was unsuccessful. Then I tried to implement uh, dynamic lightweight at log tracing and about that I will say uh, a bit in more details. But first, uh, let me summarize the problems with uh, those attempts. Maybe I'm wrong some about something, but uh, it looks like uh, this is the problem. The major problem is um, that it is very complex and uh, everybody uh, afraid um, performance overhead. Uh, this is a problem actually. Uh, but uh, if we try to minimize the performance overhead, probably the benefit of better performance uh, analyzing will be uh, very huge and uh, that is a benefit. Uh, because, uh, okay, we cannot uh, issue get time of day uh, one and every lightweighted log occurs, but if we issue that from time to time, it's relatively low overhead but we can diagnose things better. And finally, our database will have uh, not so long response time. Uh, and uh, the second problem, and this problem is actually very, uh, Oracle was also faced this problem because uh, they have different approaches to store this data, is actually how to store that. Because for example, if you have no dynamic shared memory, it's impossible to store a lot of data there. Uh, but one of the fundamental problems for me is that uh, often people do not understand how Oracle Wait interface works. Uh, that I m mean that uh, people are uh, confusing about the difference between SQL trace and uh, Wait interface itself. 
uh, as I said a couple of slides ago, uh, the first part is to collect the data, uh, presumably non very intrusive, and the second approach is uh, to do something with this data. Uh, if you try to, to do the both uh, in the same time, uh, it will be anyway very significant overhead because uh, then you are selecting something from the PG catalog and uh, at the same time uh, from the so low level, it will be the problem. So uh, once uh, again, why lightweighted log? Uh, because uh, we need some entry point to the such complex task. Uh, and uh, if I try to implement something, some counters in one and every part of uh, PostgreSQL backend, uh, uh, that will be, <laughs> I, I think, uh, quite impossible. Uh, after the first uh, posting to hackers, uh, will be uh, 1,000 uh, arguments oh, why I should not do that. Uh, and uh, uh, the laughing thing is that uh, <laughs> the half of them will be right. <laughs> 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 uh, the, and uh, the important thing is that uh, light of edit logs uh, by design are protecting very critical uh, pieces of Postgres. And if we see uh, that we, wait, we are waiting in this particular place, uh, that means um, we have some better information about performance. Uh, so maybe it's a good start point um, and the experience could be expanded to other parts of Postgres SQL. So the idea, we have a uh, lightweight log idea. Uh, and uh, we can, when we start in to wait, where I believe there are two functions in lightweight log point C, uh, point C uh, which are about that. Uh, we just put the small integer to the proc array. And from time to time, from background worker, we just uh, pull in all the proc arrays and uh, looking if there is uh, an ID, a proper ID, not minus one, not zero, not minus two, and something like that, uh, in this uh, field. And then uh, we just store it somewhere. And if there was an, an initial idea, and if we see that uh, with some speed there are a lot of uh, such lightweighted logs, that means we have a problem there. Uh, the benefit is that we have uh, exact name of lightweighted log, and we can say uh, what is actually happens at the moment in the database. What's the results of this attempt? Uh, just problems. Uh, the zero problem was actually to find the difference between proc array and proc array, uh, but it was, I would say, more technical thing. Uh, manageable. Uh, the second two things were uh, quite most, more important. Uh, usually uh, this uh, patch will return a lot of strange uh, lightweighted logs. Uh, if you see uh, what we have in uh, include, uh, there are 39 uh, named lightweighted logs. But it's easy to get something like 10,000, something like that. Uh, the problem is that uh, by design, um, besides of that lightweighted logs, we have uh, the logs which are protecting uh, shattered buffers. And uh, we need to throw them away because uh, they're actually confusing the, the whole picture. We could not see anything because uh, once upon a time, we backend can have uh, 10,000 uh, of these lightweighted logs because we have large shattered buffers. So uh, we need uh, to, to put uh, to uh, our performance view something like others and forget about that. Uh, there is no proper mechanism to uh, count them right now because there are a lot of them. The second problem is uh, the different results from tracing this. Uh, using system tab or perf, uh, in this case, system tab. Uh, but uh, finally, I managed to uh, find out that it is okay uh, by the method of uh, analyzing that. Uh, there, 
there is a nice uh, guide how to use system tab with uh, Oracle and you can just uh, see which exactly uh, which exact uh, weight event uh, is right now in this buffer and beneath uh, the active session history and if you queue the this view uh, you will see the different result and it is not completely different but it's slightly different and uh, actually the matter of this is that uh, Oracle uh, could not also could not uh, measure the time of the day in exact manner uh, they have uh, to round uh, milliseconds we have to use approximate timestamps and so on uh, and the third problem which is more fundamental from my point of view is that uh, we still need to uh, get s wait time somehow because without w hmm? because the without wait time uh, it's not so useful it's obviously uh, my suggestion is uh, can we uh, calculate this uh, wait time uh, based just on the sampling rate for example when we start the ground worker uh, we can uh, every uh, 10 getting out of the sleep uh, issue get time of day and then just add 10 millisecond, uh, milliseconds if uh, it's a, it samples every 10 milliseconds. Uh, that will be uh, a very rough da data uh, but uh, it actually can get uh, uh, some picture of uh, how this white weighted logs are spread uh, into the t uh, in the time and the, those type of data could be still useful. So uh, my agenda finally is uh, to add to this uh, patch uh, some time measurement and uh, try to resubmit it and cover with some use cases which shows that uh, there are uh, exact cases then it can help to uh, improve PostgreSQL performance. Uh, for example, uh, writing write ahead log and something like that. Uh, it actually, I have a couple of them right now. And the second thing is that uh, if we have something approximate, we need uh, to implement something more precise, but uh, we need a mechanism to turn it off and uh, probably the good idea is to keep some array of white weighted log information inside uh, each worker and uh, implement the mechanism of uh, pulling uh, these data and uh, to keep some more consistent snapshot maybe uh, not so non-intrusive but it can be still useful to prove if we have some information based on the uh, uh, PG start of the logs view uh, then we can uh, to dig farther and it still will be better than using peripheral system tab for this uh, so that's some to do about that and if you have questions or some suggestions you are welcome to ask and to discuss that one of the other and things that's interesting about the Oracle solution is that in their tracing model, you get all the weight events as well, right? Um, yes. Which is very nice. So if you're sitting there saying, I want to see what people ran in the session, you can see all the weight events of all the, you know. Uh, th th that's why this. Yeah. <laughs> that's why this. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's one thing to be able to sample, but we found that sometimes the sampling that they do is okay, but sometimes you have to get down to tracing and saying, let me see the exact order of, of the stuff that happened. Uh, and uh, actually, the use case for that is we see at uh, pitch start LV logs and found that, okay, we have some problems with something. And then uh, we can see the speed. Then we get the speed and uh, just queue uh, its buffer for more precise information about that. Actually, it shouldn't be, at the, as the first step, for example, uh, at least uh, to be into shared memory and so on and so on. You could just get it from the process memory and see w what has actually happened. So there's quite the same mechanism but inside a single worker. <coughs> yeah. uh, 
Uh, I post it uh, on the site of the conference, I think. Usually Dan collects them. Actually, some <laughs> uh, some things from uh, here were fixed uh, while this conference <laughs> goes, <laughs> because actually uh, I've come with a ready version of uh, patch and with uh, this talk ready. But one and every day I talk with someone who knows a bit about that <laughs> and need to improve some things. So I think. Uh, Next week or this week, uh, I will post it to hackers uh, to further review and discussion. Uh, maybe one more question is uh, if we can implement some alternative way to get a uh, get time of a day. Uh, as far as I know, uh, this thing is uh, not very cross-platform. There are some ways to get precise timer, but. Yeah. I've looked into this a few points. I mean, one approach is the one that you already mentioned. The minute you break it out into a background worker, you can just have that background worker sleep, and you've got a rough idea when you're going to wake up. And then just periodically, you do a real get time of day to like. Just to shift that. Back up again. You know, so mm -hmm. that works. Some software mm -hmm. does that, I found. And the other thing is, um, Another thing that we ended up adding is there's now a PG test timing utility that mm -hmm. lets you measure the overhead of get time of day. And I went and I found some systems that had good results and some systems that had bad results. And we've got those in the documentation now. So you know we can't make sure that the overhead is low for everybody, but there is a straightforward way now that people can find out do I have a fast get time of day or, or a slow get time of day. Okay. No, thank you. That's that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Bruce. I think the thing I really like about this in terms of overhead is we're not doing the get time of day unique back end within the within the processing of the query. That's a goal, yeah. So we're doing it yeah. at once per sampling in a background worker that's not running it in a critical, you know, yeah. period session. So just pulling that whole time. All you're really doing in your session is putting a, a number in your clock array and then <coughs> just keep it going. So easily makes the data time easier. No. So I believe I'm out of time and I'd like to thank some people, uh, at least Bruce, Simon Riggs, who discussed this last year and initiated that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Greg uh, Grant, uh, with we discussed it this conference a lot, and so thank you, and thank you for attending. Thank you.